In this episode, we take you back to some of the beautiful places we visited the past 365 days. We show you the facts, the damages we encountered, tell you if this is a dream life for us and are we still within budget. First, this is me, Kim. There is Bart and here is Liz, our little explorer. We sold everything to explore these beautiful places with our tiny 33-foot sailboat, Tranquility. On the 13th of July, we left Amsterdam and said goodbye to everyone. It felt surreal to leave, but we were also so ready. We were really working towards that moment. We stayed another two weeks in the Netherlands before we crossed our first border to Belgium. We sailed along the west side of the European coast towards France. The France coast reminds us of the weather. We stayed longer in the marinas instead of continuing due to the weather window. Our first set milestone was crossing the Bay of Biscay. That crossing would determine our destination. Mediterranean or Caribbean. That was because we did not have any experience in multiple day sailing. The crossing went so well we gained a lot of confidence and knew we would continue to prepare for more crossings and sail to the Caribbean. Sailing along the European coast is really nice. We fell in love with Galicia, for us a hidden gem. But we were also a little tense about the encounters between orcas and sailing vessels along the Portuguese coast, our next destination. We made a few stops along the Portuguese coast, which is known for the Nortada. But when we were there, we had no wind most of the time. We enjoyed a longer stay in Cascais, where my father visited us. We entered a fairy tale in Sintra and made a setup for downwind sailing. We went down to the Algarve, south part of Portugal, and from there we did our second crossing towards Porto Santo, Madeira. That was a real challenge for me and the hardest part so far. But thinking back, it was the best lesson I could get to prepare for the real Atlantic crossing. But I have never been that afraid on board. Our next stop was Madeira and this is our favorite island so far. From Madeira we sailed to the Canary Islands, Gran Canaria, to prepare tranquility for the Atlantic crossing. Our Atlantic crossing started from Tenerife.
us 26 days to get to Suriname. That were a lot of days on the ocean, but it never felt that way. From day one we had a good rhythm and that made the days pass by real quick. I never even got bored, which I thought that would happen. It is so special to be on an ocean so far from the living world, no distractions, only our little family and nature around us. Arriving in Suriname is one of our highlights. We had seen pictures of Suriname and read about it, but we could not imagine how it would be in real life. Neither could we imagine how it would be to cross an ocean. That combined with arriving on a brown river surrounded by jungle and all the sounds was indescribable. It's not only an accomplishment of crossing an ocean, but much more. After six weeks we left Suriname behind and went to the Caribbean, towards Grenada. This was the hardest part for me, not because of the sail conditions, those were pretty good, but the engine failure. No wind, no sun, so our batteries went low, that gave a lot of stress to me. But when the wind picked up and the sun came out, our batteries went from below 50% to 100 in one day, I could enjoy the sail again and my stress was gone. Grenada is in our top 5, because it is a really beautiful island with the kindest people, but also because we had so much fun with our friends. Yes, this has a special place in our hearts. From Grenada we went to Cariacou. Because of our plans for May, our time on the east side of the Caribbean was limited and we started to feel that. So after a short stay we left for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. To get there we made a pit stop at Sandy Island. Just wow! From one paradise to the other, Tobago case. We 
enjoyed three weeks in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and from there we went to Curaçao, where we are now. We have sailed over 6,560.5 nautical miles. We had 55 night shifts in total and we still remember the first night ever from Dieppe to St. Fast. A little anxious, Liz did not want to fall asleep, she must have felt the tension. The day after, feeling completely wrecked, but also really proud. We did it. Liz grew 12 centimeters. She was so small when we left. Just look at her now. we stayed in 28 marinas. The cheapest marina is Las Palmas, 6 euro 80. We also visited Porto Santo and that's even cheaper, but you pay the same amount in the marina as on anchor, 6 euros per night. We stayed at anchor, so for that reason we do not count that one. It was the most expensive anchor place though. The most expensive marina for us was Porto. Daro Marina. Yes, living and traveling on board was a big dream of us. We always thought we would do it until we retire. But luckily we decided to do it now and enjoy the precious time together and watch Liz grow up. It really feels like a gift to ourselves and we feel really grateful to be on this journey. But like a Dutch saying, Het is geen rozengeur en manenschijn, translated in something like it's not all sunshine and rainbows. This lifestyle also comes with challenges, just as in a non-sailing life. The first part since we left felt like being on a holiday, but slowly that changed. More and more we realized this is our life and all of a sudden we had some struggles about being together 24 seven. We needed to find a new rhythm. Time as a family, time alone, time alone with Liz, time together, working time and so on. And we have to say, that is the biggest challenge so far. But we make it work with ups and downs. We also did some boat projects along the way. We can divide them in two kinds of projects. The ones necessary to keep the boat in the best condition, like the wooden plugs for the mast and the ones for our comfort. Our biggest project on the way so far was the installation of the electric anchor windlass. Due to some delivery problems we could not get the windlass in the Netherlands on time, so it got sent to Acarunia. We had chosen this location because it would take us another two months to get there and hoping that would be enough time for the factory to produce and send it. And we could stay there for a longer period so we didn't have to stress out on finishing it. The project itself was kind of scary because we had to make a big hole in our boat, but it was so worth it. Full-time living on board, being in the elements and be surrounded by other boats means that things might break. We are really lucky that we did not have any damages during the trip that could cause injuries or be a structural damage. Tranquility is really strong and held everything perfect. That said, we did have a few problems along the way. To name three, our water pump broke after 30 days in use, just one day after arriving in Suriname. We were really lucky there and had a spare. The second one is the MDI box. Okay, that might have caused a serious problem if we did not know how to jumpstart the engine, but we did. It took a lot of stress and cost though. 
And another major problem was Fincilate, the non-toxic anti-fouling wrap we applied last April. Due to a barnacle we encountered during our Atlantic crossing, our wrap drop got destroyed. We will tell you all the details in another episode, but this really, really sucks and is the reason we are on the heart so long in Curacao. And the short answer is no, we are far above. Before we left, we set a budget as a guideline for living and maintenance. And to set the budget, we used the experience of others uh, to determine ours. But we also knew we might exceed that budget because we didn't want to miss out on experiences and we knew we might do some upgrades to the boat as well. Most of our budget went into going out for dinner. A little bit more than expected. Um, car rental and excursions. But also we had a lot more costs in maintenance and upgrades. Um, the big setback of that story is of course the Finsulate. Um, it took us much longer to get it off and then the housing was more costly because we had to extend our period in the house as well. Of course we could live on the heart like a lot of other cruisers do but for us that didn't feel right to do with Liz. Uh, it's very hot, we had to climb up a stair every now and then and that was just not for us so that's why we rented out an apartment very close to the hospital. Not only the maintenance was higher than expected but also the upgrades we did on tranquility and those upgrades were like the Bimini, the salt water tap, uh, the swimming platform uh, and these upgrades weren't uh, predicted because we couldn't foresee it. We needed to live and travel on the boat to experience what we needed on the boat for our comfort. So are they necessary? Definitely not. But for our comfort and it's our house, yes, we think we needed them. Okay, so let's talk the real numbers then. Before we left, we calculated a annual budget of 35,000 euros which nowadays is dollars as well. Um, but we exceeded it and we came up with 55,000 euros. So that's a lot more. But you have to calculate in that budget, in the 55,000 euros is 23,000 euros spent on maintenance and upgrades. So that is a big chunk of the year, yearly budget. Um, we think we can do better next year because last year uh, was in Europe and harbor fees were very expensive um, and now since we are in the Caribbean we are more at anchor and also we cook a little bit more on on board and we think we don't have to spend that much more money on maintenance and upgrades anymore fingers crossed about the maintenance of course but <laughs> um, so we still think for the upcoming seasons, upcoming years, the budget is uh, is gonna be fine. We hope to stay underneath. That would be that nice would be better. and yeah. a challenge. We accept. On material stuff, we miss nothing. We do not have a laundry. Uh, service? Service, <laughs> no. We do we not have, have a washing machine. <laughs> we do not have a washing machine on board. <laughs> And that feels kind of luxurious to have uh, and practical, especially with a child. Um, but we don't miss it. It's easy to find other options to do your laundry. Um, so we can manage. Uh, we miss the nice evenings, the weekends when we, uh, when we sat with our friends. Um, the close conversations, intimate conversations. That's what we do miss uh, on, in this life. And the important things with friends, like life-changing events or just events that when you live close to each other and see each other regularly, are more, you're more involved and now it takes more energy to get involved. The best part of the trip is 
um, and maybe it's an open door but it's the uh, it's then again the contacts you make during the trip we've made a lot of friends during our trip and I think because everybody we become friends with in the cruising life they're in the same uh, mindset and the same position as we are so you get more intimate you get more you get intimate faster so our conversations well <laughs> I mean on a conversation level <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so it's um, your 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 conversations are deeper and um, they have much more load to it We have several options. We could sail north to the Bahamas and go all the way up to New York. We could do another Caribbean round. Or we go to Panama and through the canal to the Pacific. We still have three months till the end of hurricane season. So still time to think about it. Do you have any thoughts on what we should do and why? Let us know in the comments section down below. Well, this was it. If you have any questions, please let us know. And for now, goodbye and thank you very much for watching. Fair winds to you all.